Hello! In this Java tutorial, you're going to learn about recursion. The four topics you'll cover are What is recursion and when do we use it? Writing a recursive method. Specifically, you'll learn how to write a recursive method to calculate factorials. Binary recursion. What it is and how we use it. And finally, head recursion and tail recursion. To keep up to date on the latest content, please hit the subscribe button. In this tutorial, we are going to learn what recursion is in programming. In future lessons, we are going to learn how to write specific types of recursive methods. Some important facts. A recursive method or function is one that calls itself. For a recursive method to be useful, it should have two things. First, it should have at least one recursive case where the method is called again, and it should also have at least one base case where the method is not called again. Let's imagine that we have a line of school children that we want to count. The teacher asks the student at the end of the line, Blue, how many students are there? Blue could handle this problem iteratively, like with a for loop or a while loop, and go through and count each student individually, and then respond with the total. Instead, Blue decides to handle the problem recursively. The recursive algorithm that he comes up with, count how many, has two parts. The first part is if there is somebody in front of you, you ask them how many people are in their shorter line. Once they answer, you add one to their answer. This is called the recursive case because it ends up calling the algorithm count how many again. On the other hand, if there is no one in front of you, you simply answer 1 because that is the number of people in your line, 1 which is yourself. We call this the base case because it does not call the algorithm again. We have to make sure that we always end up at a base case, otherwise we will end up calling the algorithm over and over again, and end up with an infinite loop. Let's try out this algorithm and see how it works. Blue starts by checking, is there someone in front of him? There is, so the first thing he does is ask that person how many people are in their smaller line. The next person, Green, looks at the line, sees there's someone in front of them, and asks how many people are in your line. Next, Red checks his line, sees there's someone in front of him, and asks that person, how many people are in your line? Next, Yellow looks at the line, sees that there's someone in front of him, and then asks that person how many people are in your line. Pink looks at his line and sees there's no one in front of him, so he goes to the base case and simply answers 1. Now that yellow has a response from pink, he can do the second part and add 1 to pink's answer, and he responds 2. Now that red has an answer from yellow, he adds 1 to yellow's number and responds 3. Next, green adds 1 to red's number and responds 4. Finally, blue adds 1 to green's answer and responds 5. Blue gives his answer back to the teacher, now that the algorithm is complete. In part 2 of our lesson on recursion in Java, we're going to look at how to solve a factorial recursively, and then how to trace out that algorithm. First, some information on factorials. A factorial is an integer multiplied by all positive integers below it. Both 0 factorial and 1 factorial are equal to 1. Factorials can be calculated either iteratively or recursively. In this case, we're going to study how to do it recursively. Let's look at an example of a factorial. 5 factorial is equal to 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. We could also say 5 factorial is equal to 5 times 4 factorial. In this case, we're taking a recursive approach by making a smaller version 
of our original algorithm. Next, we're saying 4 factorial equals 4 times 3 factorial, which is again even a smaller application of our original algorithm. Then 3 factorial equals 3 times 2 factorial, 2 factorial equals 2 times 1 factorial, and then 1 factorial is our base case, which simply equals 1. Let's write out some code to solve this recursively in Java. First, we're making a method, fact, that takes in an integer parameter. Here's our base case. If the num is 0 or 1, we return 1. If it's 0 factorial or 1 factorial is 1. And this is our base case because it does not call itself. Next, we have our recursive case, where we multiply the number times the factorial of 1 less than the current number. This is our recursive case because we are calling the same method again, but passing it a smaller problem this time. Here we've created our main method so we can call our recursive method fact. In this case we're going to system out print line whatever is returned by fact when we pass it the argument 5. So on the stack we place fact 5, which is our first call, and we say that's going to return 5 times fact 5 minus 1, which is 4. Next, we calculate fact 4 will return 4 times fact num minus 1, which is 3. Fact 3 will return 3 times fact num minus 1, which is 2. Fact 2 returns 2 times num minus 1, which is 1. And finally, fact 1, when we pass 1 to the parameter, we go to our base case and simply return 1. Now we're going to plug these things in as we pop items off the stack. So we know fact 1 returns 1, so we cross this out, put in the 1, and we pop the top thing off the stack. Next, we calculate 2 times 1 is 2, so fact 2 will return 2, pop this off the stack, and then replace the 2 with our call to fact 2. Next, we calculate that 3 times 2 is 6, so we know fact 3 will return 6, pop that off the stack, and plug in the 6. 4 times 6 is 24, so we know fact 4 will return 24. We know replace the fact 4 with the 24. 24 times 5 is 120. So we know the number 120 gets returned to our main method, which will be outputted. Some important additional information to know about recursion. There is a finite amount of room in the stack. Therefore, we have to be careful to use algorithms that won't fill our stack above capacity. If the stack gets full, it will lead to a stack overflow, which will cause our Java program to crash. Stack overflows can happen when we accidentally create an infinite loop, where the same method gets called over and over again till the stack runs out of space. We can also run out of space in the stack if we try to use an algorithm that will make too many recursive calls and will fill up the stack. Recursive calls should move the program closer to the base case. If it doesn't move it closer to the base case, we will eventually run out of space in our stack and get a stack overflow. If you're learning from this video, please hit the like button. In this Java tutorial, we're going to learn about binary recursion and we're going to look at it using the example of the Fibonacci sequence. Some important facts. Binary recursion is when a recursive method calls itself twice in each run. A well-known example is using binary recursion to calculate the Fibonacci sequence. The first two digits of the Fibonacci sequence are 1 and 1, or sometimes 0 and 1. Later digits are calculated by adding the two previous digits. 
Let's take a look at the Fibonacci sequence. So we start out with 1 and 1, and our third digit is the sum of the two previous digits, so 1 plus 1 equals 2, then 1 plus 2 equals 3, 2 plus 3 equals 5, 3 plus 5 equals 8, and so on. This is a problem that's well made for recursion because we calculate our current value by adding the two previous values, which can also be calculated by adding their two previous values. Let's write some code to calculate the Fibonacci sequence recursively. First, we'll make a method that returns an int, and it takes in an int parameter called digit. This will be what digit in the Fibonacci sequence we're looking for. We start by writing the base case. If we're looking for digit 1 or digit 2, we're simply going to return 1, because digit 1 and 2 are always 1. In our recursive case, we're going to add the sum of the digit before the current one and the digit that's two digits before the current one, and we're going to call the same method to calculate it. Here we add a main method that's going to call fib and pass the argument 5, so it'll print out the fifth digit in the Fibonacci sequence. How we trace this out is a little different. We'll do it in an upside-down tree format that's typical with binary recursion. So we start with our first call, fib, and pass the value 5. This is not the base case because digits is not equal 1 or 2. So we're going to make two calls to the same method. We're going to call fib digit minus 1, which is 4, and then digit minus 2, which is 3. So we branch it off into two separate calls. I usually go down the left tree branch and then go back around and fill out anything I need to. So we're going to go to fib4. 4. 4 is going to go into that parameter. We see that it's not 1 or 2, so we're going to make a call to fib3 and then fib2. Next, we make a call to fib and passing it the value 3. It's not equal to 1 or 2, so we make a call to fib2 and then fib1. Now we've hit two base cases. We know fib, if we pass it the value 2, is going to return 1. And we know if you pass fib the value 1, it's going to return 1. So now we can add up these two values and figure out what is fib 3 going to return. And fib 3 will return 1 plus 1, which is 2. Now we can look at fib 2. We already know what fib 2 returns because we can see it from this example. So we don't even have to look at the code. So we can just say fib 2 will return 1. We also know that fib 3 is always going to return 2. So we don't have to create the extra branches on this end of the tree. We simply cross it out and write in 2. Next, we add 2 plus 1, which will be 3. So we know fib 4 will return 3. And then to calculate fib 5, we add 3 plus 2, because that's what fib 4 plus fib 3 returned. And we learn that when we call fib 5, it'll return 5, because 5 is the fifth digit in the Fibonacci sequence. Depending on the problem you are using, you may not be able to simply fill in the other parts of the tree. You may have to draw additional branches, but it's always valuable to see if there's ones that have already been calculated and then fill it in on other branches of the tree. Another important thing to remember is you're not always going to be adding the two calls together. You could be subtracting them, multiplying, dividing, or doing some other operation. In this Java tutorial, we are going to learn about head and tail recursion. Some important facts to know. Head recursion is when a recursive call happens at the beginning of the method before other processing. Tail recursion is when a recursive call happens at the end of the method after other processing. There are other circumstances where a recursive call may happen both before and after other processing. Let's write some code for head recursion. We see the recursive call is at the top or the head of the method before the other processing down here. Now let's write a main method and see what happens when we call mystery with the argument 3. So we call mystery with the argument 3 and it puts that on the stack. The argument 3 
goes into the parameter x. Then we check is x greater than 0 and 3 is greater than 0. So we make another call to the method. 3 minus 1 is 2, so we call mystery2 and place it on the stack. This block of code here, which is at the end of the method, won't be processed until we work our way back down the stack. So now we pass the argument 2 to the parameter x. We check is 2 greater than 0. It is. So we call mystery x minus 1 and place mystery 1 on the stack. Again, we are going to skip this for now and come back to it when we complete this call. So we pass the argument 1 to the parameter x. 1 is greater than 0. So now we call mystery x minus 1, which is mystery 0, and place it on the stack. We pass 0 to our parameter x. We check is x greater than 0. In this case it is not. So we skip this block of code here. And then we print out the value of x, which is 0, and that goes to our console. Now that we've finished this method, we'll pop this off the top of the stack. Now we'll continue back down to this call, and we can complete the unprocessed portion of this method. So here x equals 1, so we'll output 1. Then we'll pop this one off the top of the stack. Then we'll go down to here x equals 2 here, so we output 2, pop that off the top of the stack, and then finally we go to this one where the value of x is 3, output the value 3, then we pop that off the stack and finish the program. Now let's look at an example of tail recursion. This is pretty much the same program except the recursive call is at the tail of the method and we have some other processing at the beginning. We start by calling mystery3, put that on the stack. The 3 goes into the x parameter. Then we print off x value, which is 3, so we output 3. Then we check is x greater than 0? It is. So we make another call to mystery x minus 1. So we call mystery2 and put that on the stack. Then we pass the 2 to the x. We print out the x value, which outputs to the console. We check is x greater than 0. It is. So we call mystery x minus 1, which is in this case mystery 1, and put it on the top of the stack. The 1 goes into the parameter. We print off the value x, which is in this case 1. It goes to the console. Then we check is x greater than 0. It is. So we make a call to x minus 1. We put mystery 0 at the top of the stack. The value of the parameter x is 0, so we print off x, which is 0. That goes to the console. We check is x greater than 0. It is not, so we do not execute this code. And then we finish up this run of the method. We pop this off the top of the stack. Then we finish up mystery1, pop that off the top of the stack. We finish up mystery2, pop it off the top of the stack. We finish up mystery3, pop it off the top of the stack then we are done with the program. So you can see the ordering of the output is in the opposite order than when we did it with head recursion. Now we'll look at a final program where we can use both of the previous techniques. In this program we've got some processing before the recursive call and also some processing after the recursive call. This piece of code will execute as soon as the method is called whereas this piece of code after the recursive call won't execute until we're moving our way back down the stack. As an exercise, try tracing this problem out yourself. To see the entire Java curriculum, please click on the playlist in the lower right-hand corner of the screen. To see the compressed Learn Java in 3 Hours tutorial, please click on the video link in the lower left-hand corner of the screen. If you have any questions, comments, or feedback, please be sure to leave me comments at the bottom.